and um, we still have a very healthy 50% of annualized unrestricted revenue in reserve, which is good. <coughs> the first um, order of business is a resolution appointing, we now know it'll be Steve Burke uh, as a council member. It should say tabled at the November meeting, not the July meeting because well, we... Well, it was tabled again though. It was moved and tabled at the July meeting too. Right. It was, it was from originally, and then right. reset for November. And then it was Maybe reset, and then it was done in November. Yeah. And um, so we'll pop Steve's name in there. Uh, are we putting this at the end? Uh, it's old business, so I guess you could uh, probably need to do it in old business. So. So in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. And then I will have the. Uh, Oath form and mayor, you have the legal authority to swear him in. Okay. So if you want to just take a little break and swear him in, he can sure, sit, we can sit in the rest of the meeting. So uh, are you good, good with that? Yep. I am. Okay. Okay. And so the way this would work, it, the, the resolution on the agenda has the blank, so there'll need to be a motion to amend it to insert the name and a vote, and then a final vote after for uh, second and a motion second. For final. Okay, the second is the second reading of an ordinance amending the Bell Vista Code of Ordinances to enact an urban forestry and landscape ordinance and for other purposes. And I think that's yours. Mm -hmm. I wanted to point out one thing on this just to make sure everyone understands. Generally, it, it deals with public trees and the things that you all talked about. In Section 5, there is a little piece of it that could apply elsewhere. And I want to make sure it's to your, uh, to your knowledge when you're looking at this. In Section 5, it says... Um, Authority, the city of Belle Vista shall have the authority to regulate, conduct, and oversee the planning, maintenance, and removal of trees on city managed property to ensure public safety and to preserve aesthetics, health, and environment. That's clear. In addition, the city shall have the authority to cause the removal of any diseased or hazardous tree or, par or tree parts within the city when a potential hazard to public safety and welfare exists, but it shall not be obligated to do so. Each city department shall have the authority to implement this ordinance on properties for which it is responsible. Private residential property not maintained by the city shall be exempt from the provisions of this ordinance except when a potential hazard to public safety and welfare exists. So it is not mandatory on the city, but it does provide a, a path to say the city could take the role of removing a dangerous tree on private property, but it is not obligated to do so. I just want to make sure that you all knew that that was in there. And, yeah. If we had to do that, would we be able to lien the property for the expense? It just depends on the circumstance. Uh, I mean, it could be that uh, it, it, we'd have a factual dispute about how the nature of the danger of the tree. I mean, it could get complicated. I mean, if there is a, if it was a health risk, I mean, it's half broken, it's leaning over uh, onto a neighbor's property or something, I can't say no, it's impossible. It might be possible to do that, but it's not. You couldn't count on it. A, not a typical situation, and it would not necessarily be an, an automatic okay. thing. Anything else? Moving on to new business. Is an ordinance accepting and confirming the dedication of public right-of-way by Cooper Communities Inc. near the area of Highlands Crossing. This is um, that small piece of road that runs off 340 and goes past the entrance into the adult daycare and the, uh, and the TV station and goes all the way down. Mike Button had a look at it. Well, it's, this has been in, in the works for two years. And he's looked at it periodically. The road is fine. He has no problem taking it over and snow plowing it. And so the last piece that we were looking for was the sign off by Cooper. You can see the quick claim in your packet. And uh, I'll probably move this one to third and final, so in case we get snow, we can take care of it. I know the residents are pretty happy up there that this is happening, so um, as I say, it took two years, but it's worth it. So is this something we wanted to do or Cooper wanted to do? No, the residents said the residents, residents wanted it, it done. Yeah. yeah, so we got it done. 
The next is a resolution awarding bid and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Vanguard Cleaning Systems of the Ozarks for janitorial cleaning services for city facilities. This was something that uh, Wayne took on for us. He went out to bid, and uh, you can see the bids that came in. We did not choose the cheapest ones uh, or one because there were some anomalies that troubled us. The very cheapest, instead of giving us a full explanation of what they were going to do, was simply, it looked like a little receipt book thing and a price for each property. Yeah. But we didn't get, this is what we will do, this is the frequency that we will do it, etc., etc. So we felt a little uncomfortable for that. Jan staff is the one that currently has the contract. Um, most departments have said they're not pleased with what they're seeing. We have been working with Jan staff for quite some time to improve the service, but not very successfully. Corvus Services, um, I think that's another one that didn't give us a full explanation, Wayne. No, they had a good explanation, but they just had some limitations on how we would get rid of them if we're not happy with them. Oh, that's right. They made it a little more difficult for us to change. Okay, so we ended up with Vanguard. Yeah. But other than that, the two of them probably had the most detail as to what they would do for us. <clears throat> Any questions for Wayne at all? This is all the buildings, I mean, police, fire, city hall, all that. Not all fire. Not fire. 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 fire has their own. Yeah, but they're doing something. It's the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, the next is a resolution authorizing budget. Uh, budgetary funding transfers between departments in the 2018 annual city budget. Uh, we do this every year so that we can balance off there are, there are any shortages against the overages. At this point, um, I don't think we'll have to use it. We didn't use it last year, but just in case, it gives the flexibility so the carry can get the books finished. Next. Is the final. That's awarding bid and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Crossland's heavy contractors in the amount of $3,263,961.90 for construction related to phase two of the Bella Vista trail system. Um, Frank, I did speak to Aaron, he's here tonight, and what he said was it'll probably be ready to start sometime mid-January. Mid first part of January. Okay, and then it'll, it'll go for the 208 days. But we'll have a full <laughs> schedule and we'll share that with everybody so they can see it. So, so this is completed by money from the Walt Foundation. Yes. That, and, yeah. and so how, how does that transfer of funds work? Um, I know it's Northwest Arkansas Trailblazers, the POA, the city have the licensing agreement. So how does the flow of money, money well, work? The city enters into the contract for the construction. We get billed and then we get reimbursed from cash through the foundation. And then the grant agreement dictates that they pay us back. But they actually paid us in advance already. Oh, right. I know some has been deposited. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's how it works. It's coming from the Walton fam uh, Family Foundation direct to us. Okay. And we're paying the bills. This is for the infrastructure portion. So where they have to do the road cuts and, and the use of our easements, then we will actually have the inspection process and Michael go out and make sure everything's fine and that it's properly paved at the end, etc. Um, and then we will pay the bill. Sound about right? Yeah. And you said that the, the entire schedule was 208 days? Yeah, I believe it's 208 days to get it done. But there will be others. There are smaller contracts that will be coming in as well. We just did one for 176. Yeah, for the traffic signal work. Right, uh, for the traffic signal work. And so the same company that does it today and mm -hmm. yeah, and looks after them is the one that we'll put them in for tomorrow or for the central area. Any other questions? Jim? Is somewhere in there how many years they're going to be responsible for maintenance before it turns over to us? Um, in that grant, they're giving us two years worth of maintenance. Okay. And we'll probably do what we did um, when we were building back 40. If you remember, unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't stop growing after they're building the trails. So we'll do the whole volunteer thing again. The volunteers that help us by hoeing and taking care of the trail will have the ability to actually ride the trail. We'll have the little orange tags that they can 
put on their bikes so that the officers out on the on the trails will know that it's fine to let them use the trail ahead of the official opening. And that's sort of our, th our thank you for stepping forward and volunteering to keep them clean. Good. Anything else? On the uh, Trafalgar fire, I had the impression the EPA was going to take some more air samples starting today, is that right? Yeah, the EPA showed up as promised. They will be taking samples for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and the morning of each day they will be coming out, swapping out the canister, putting a fresh canister in, so that it is a true, fresh reading for the entire day. Um, Thursday they'll pack it up, they'll send all the, all the samples out to their contractor in California, and they're hoping to publish the results by December uh, 21st. Um, I've been talking to them today about various alternative suppression tactics to put the fire out because of the problems using water in Lake Ann. And we've been talking about trenching, foam, getting an excavator, pulling it all apart. Um, and the EPA is now looking at all these options along with ADEQ just to see which one is going to work the best. <coughs> Okay. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I had a, a I, what I would characterize as a knowledgeable citizen today asked me about uh, Boots and Coots, whose specialty is putting out oil fires, oil well fires. Wow. So they're used to underground stuff. Now they're specialty. So whether they would have any knowledge that would be helpful. I actually spoke with a gentleman in California. His name is, is Todd Fullhammer. And he's put out fires similar to this in 45 locations around the country, actually around the world. And he and I spoke for a long time, and then I was able to use that information in my discussion with the EPA as well. Okay. Sir, you had a question? Yeah, so uh, more general, the question about um, the uh, <coughs> agenda. So. You know, just like stump dump, now Trafalgar fire. Um, you know, there are several things that are kind of sitting out there, and I wonder: if, is there an opportunity to put like another a line on the agenda that addresses certain things, just just for updates, just so we know sure. what's going on all at one time? Well, hang, hang on. well <laughs> that, that's where the work session. Yes, at the regular meeting, it's more difficult because of the rules. Here at the work session, that's never yeah. well. fair enough, right? Okay. So, I mean, we have a lot of things out there, and there may not even be updates, but we have, like, the water department, we have the road failure, mm -hmm. you know, suits us, we have comprehensive plan 2040, of course, you just alluded to the stump dump. Uh, another one out there that seems to be growing is, uh, you know, how, it, it's actually about, the, you know, the hole in the wall of the business, but mm -hmm. and then question about issuing temporary permits, but just so... You know, like 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 the way the the whole thing unfolded with the stump dump fire, Trafalgar fire, I guess now, um, we might be able to um, kind of head off, you know, some situations uh, if we have like regular updates at meetings. We can do that. You know, and just kind of maybe have a list, and some things might come on, some things may go off, but rather than if we have questions each individually and having to set time with you and come in for an hour and take your time in that regard, then you know, it's not going to you know, stop that completely, but it could head some of that off, and it and could head off some concerns by residents as well. Sure, you can do that. Yeah, at the work session. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, then may you know more things may also get in the paper or wherever, uh, so people. Or there may be new things that crop up as well that we want to share with you because I, as things crop up, I usually send out all of you a, you know, just a quick heads up. This has arrived or this is happening, mm -hmm. um, but we can also do it at the work session. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, it'd be kind of like an official add to the work session agenda. You know, maybe it's at the very end, whatever that is, if it is in Jane. And well, the rules yeah. really don't dictate what's on the work session agenda. You can put whatever you want on the work session agenda. We, I think it's just whatever Wayne types up on there to talk about or whatever. So, so would we call you, Wayne and say, this? 
kind of a list of things any, I'd like to be. Anything you want to talk about at a work session, I'm sure you'd call Wayne or email me or Wayne or whatever. And, yeah, we can get and it, it could be just something we want to talk about before you even know if you want to pass an ordinance or a resolution or and something. It doesn't even have to be on the agenda. Just bring it up. Yeah, and I understand that, but I'd like to make it a little bit more kind of like not a formal list, but a there are these list. certain <laughs> things that are out yeah. there all the time. Right. You know, sure. no, well, if it's on the list, list, you're more certain to think of it. Or yeah, yeah. Give, you, you, give, give you a chance to, sure. you know, get your thoughts together on it because you'll typically be the person giving the feedback. Sure. So, having said that, uh, temporary permits. What's the process for issuing those? Um, I guess that's what it was, like for the hole in the wall or whatever. Um, no, I, I don't know what it was. You don't know what it was? Mm -hmm. Did they just move forward with uh, that event that they had out there? What happened was, I think you know what happened as far as we never got the annexation registered. I, I right. do know that, yeah. Right. And so uh, Kevin made the decision at the time that he would allow them to continue on with their plan, but they could not build any, any buildings or do anything like that um, because they had invested so much so far into it only to discover that it really was within the city. So then a week ago maybe? He felt like it was ago. he yeah. felt like it wasn't their fault. Correct. We yeah. all thought they, it was outside the city. That's right, it was yeah. our fault. It was about a week and a half ago we met with uh, their representative as the mayor. And the the quick just the legal question is this because none of that got filed with the county, there's a significant legal question about the that could have been raised regarding its validity as regards to notice to the public. There's that. And then there's also the question of the applicability of the zoning ordinance to it if it wasn't filed in the county, because the ordinance also zoned it residential at the same time it brought it into the city. So if it, of course, if it's ineffective, it's not in the city, and we're not going to acknowledge that it's ineffective. We don't think it's ineffective. But there is this issue where the city did not get this filed for whatever reason. And so what occurred to me was to say, look, it's in the city, but because these filings did not take place to finalize this until after you'd already begun the process of operation, then this would, pursuant to our zoning code, be considered a pre-existing non-conforming use. In other words, you were doing it before all this annexation and, and bringing it into the city legally got finalized. We're willing to acknowledge that. If you don't challenge the annexation and you're allowed to do the conduct which you're doing at the scale you're doing it right now, what that also means is they can't do more than what they're doing, add anything, construct anything, or anything without in turn getting a rezoning. So nothing more intense can happen out there, only the scale in which they had been operating up to this point would be allowed to occur. And the reason for that was to, el to eliminate the possibility of a legal challenge to that, and plus acknowledging the fact that for whatever reason the city did not get that filed, and they had significant and put a significant investment in there at no fault of theirs. Go ahead, then I'll. However, it was clearly stated in the multiple listing under public remarks when they purchased that property that the seller had annexed it into the city of Bella Vista. And it was unknown by Benton County. It was not on any of the maps. It would not I'm have just been known to a title searching company. And so I don't know what was in the MLS. That's And it was under public remarks. And, the, and the owner of the land at the time knew that it was annexed because yes. they received the official legal notices. Yes. I think it, it is transferred to a, to a second party who in turn sold it to these people, I believe is what the, the circumstance was there. Right. So, uh, this was a, a compromise result to a bad situation. Yes, I understand. Okay. So, what you described is, is the result that. Well, we sent a letter to them and said, we're going to deem the use as it is at this intensity as a pre existing non conforming. It is in the city, but it, that's, that's really because I do think if they went to court, it probably would have been. So, help me out. So, what's the intensity? I mean,. That means they're not going to be able to add add stalls, add units, add, construct anything. Can't things. build a hotel. Ha can't, can't build anything other than the limited thing that they're doing. They don't get the full range of all commercial everything. They do not get that. They only get to do this little thing that they've done at the, at the scope they're doing it. Camping. Camping. So, so they can't grow it without getting it rezoned. 
Okay. They can apply for, uh, I'm going to call it an alcohol permit? I don't know. That's up to the state. You know, we don't have any part of that. I'm okay. not sure exactly what ABC, how they would treat that. Like continue to have like bands and play with amplifiers on the I think what you'll property. find when you talk to them is they realize they made a mistake with the music. And what they're going to do when the weather gets better in the spring is they're going to have a community outreach and bring everybody together so they can actually see uh, the operation and see their plans and see what they intend to do. As far as alcohol, I can't, I can't answer that. Well, the compromise you described seems reasonable to well, me. Well, one thing, and we make this clear to them, this is not a permission to put cars all up and down Chelsea right. in the right of way. They cannot, they could, even if they got rezoned, they couldn't do that. Okay, uh, that's illegal to have overnight parking on the street. They've been notified of that, and if that were to occur, the police could take action out there, no matter what this resolution was regarding their use on the property. So the cars must be parked inside the gate. Well, and you know, kind of going back to my my other question about what we could put on the agenda for the work session. Conversations like this are helpful because I'm getting phone calls, mm -hmm. met with residents, and to talk about it and get it out. Well, the letter went so, out Friday, so we, you know, I was, we, we were going to, we had this meeting. Today. The letter went out to the owners of the property? Right, their attorney. Okay. And to the owners, or the operators of this, the, the representatives of the owner. Okay. Anything else? The highway, what do we know about the highway? When will it get started? Any, we... Oh, the bypass? Yeah. No idea. No one's come up with any dates yet. Nobody's done much about it yet, except we no. know they got the money. It was a very unique way of doing it. Yes, it's it was. A, you know, as you know, that portion of McDonald County is within the Northwest Arkansas yep. Regional Planning. Yeah. And so to use the regional planning as the hub to get the money was smart. And um, Senator Bozeman and Senator Cotton were in the thick of it, helping. So it's nice to see it done, but no, I don't know the dates. I'm told that... Um, Missouri has all the easements, all the rights of way. They've done all the environmental stuff. They've got all the plans ready to go. <coughs> in fact, if you drive southbound on 49 before the exit that's blocked off, if you look in the distance, you can see piles mm -hmm. of crushed rock. So um, <coughs> I suspect it'll move faster than if they were just, okay, now we've got the funding, now we have to move forward with other stuff. I think most of the other stuff is done. But how long it's going to take, I don't know. It's a very rough, as you know, 4.8 miles. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, it's a tough, tough it's a area. Tough area. Highway, no Are there any limits on the money that you're aware of, time-wise or anything? No, I haven't heard of any. Some of the stuff from federal government you know, has to be done at right. certain times. Yeah, the SDPs and everything else grants and passed. But I haven't heard of any time limit on it. I'm sorry, a couple of, well, just because they're on the list, because I, I, I got to ask about all these things this morning. Uh, the road failure, uh, because people are driving by and there's obviously not anything, activity, any, any timeline, any update on that? Um, the contractors are still talking to their uh, geotechs to determine should they do the road first or last. I would prefer last. I'd rather see the grade stabilized first. So that's what they're looking at now, stabilizing the cut. Comprehensive plan 2040. I guess since you know, Kevin's left. We got we've got to open the <coughs> lot again, so that's yeah. going to kind of delay that some more. Yeah, we're in fact I interviewed somebody today for the position. Uh, we have a couple more that we want to look at, so we want to move fairly quickly on this and get it closed because it's been hanging on far too long. Um, and then we can start actually taking the action from that. Start to update zones where zones have to be updated. I want to go back and look at all the ordinances because I know they were put together pretty quick according to Daniel, Ellis, and Chris. And and there are some that we know we have to go back and fix. One one thing, I mean, the process is if they come to us with a new community master plan, then, <coughs> then the master plan gets adopted. This is our plan. And then after we adopt the master plan, which is the broad view, then you come through with your zoning changes in order to implement. Right. So it's kind of a, it's a multi-step process. And so you're going to have that. And then as part of that, a lot of our development regulations tie into the zoning. So we're going to need to look at all of that, how that fits together, and make sure that it still fits, given, you know, whatever the new zoning scheme is going to end up in. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, going back to what Doug was talking about, so you said work session, you can basically do what you want. Mm -hmm. In a real meeting, a city meeting, it things have to be on the agenda to be talked about. Right, exactly. So the items have to be on the agenda. Your rules are in the in, in the city code, and, and yeah. so. You know, this isn't in the rules, but we've got a little <coughs> cutoff date so that Wayne can get everything together and get it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, uh, but if you want to, I mean, you all meet to discuss ordinances and resolutions. And so, you know, if it's not an ordinance or a resolution on the agenda, there's no business to be conducted. I mean, that's, it's not just, let's just talk about this and have a free-for-all sure. or something. That's yeah. just not the way it works. Well, but work session is what yeah. exactly what that's for. Yeah. So, like well, that. an example is the last meeting when a bunch of people got up and talked about a particular topic. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they took it the wrong way and we didn't talk right. back to them. Well, that's <laughs> right. the, the, yeah. the public comment session, sec, section of a city council meeting is for them to communicate to you. It is not a back and forth. It's three minutes of public comment about whatever they want. Yeah. Usually it's a matter of public concern. Sure. They could stand up there and read the newspaper to you for three minutes if they wanted to. It's their First Amendment right. Uh, so uh, that is what that's for. And, and a lot of people want to use it as a question and answer period. And sure. It's not that. Yeah, I understand. It is a time, yeah. let's hear from the community in a formal setting. All right. And then at the next work session or after the meeting, then you, know, you can talk yeah. and determine what can go on. And so... And I think the mayor describes that at the meeting. It's just an opportunity for you to talk to us. They sign the list. It makes you all know what the public is concerned about to know what you need to be thinking about for the future. Yeah. yeah. It's not meant to be a spite to them. It's just... Yeah, I understand. It's not, they don't, they're not on the council. They don't get to debate with the rest of the council. You know, yeah. You know, it doesn't happen that way. I just thought it would be good for everybody to clarify that. Anything else in anybody's mind? Okay. See you Monday.